Okay, welcome to another show and tell here. We have the Graphic Art Materials Reference Manual by Letraset. Letraset's still around and still makes some uh, different types of products as far as I know. Um, but <laughs> these types of companies that made the types of products that they used to offer have long since been kind of reduced by uh, the digital age. I don't know um, if they have their kind of... Uh, intellectual property in digital form now, but um, this book right here used to be kind of my almost Bible of, uh, you know, in terms of art and graphic design types of uh, resources, uh, or a resource for the materials that they offered. And this one is from 1984. I was kind of curious. I know I got this in high school, and I used to look through this thing all the time. Uh, one of the biggest things that they had were, uh, that they offered were these um, pages of press-on type. And that press-on type pre-digital age was the way that you had to, uh, you know, utilize lettering form, um, you know, for the, for the graphic artist, designer, advertisement type of thing. And they came in sheets like this. They offered their um, wares in both um, reverse and positive, so either black or white type here. And you would go to art stores that carried these types of things, and you'd say, um, let's see, you would say, oh, I need a 7648CN or something like that. And they would go and you know, they would look through their files and see if they found all this type of stuff, you know, so I used to get this stuff all the time to add to my uh, artwork and whatnot and started collecting it little by little. These little dots right here were really fun to use. You can use them. Uh, they're all press-on, so you'd use them and you'd press them onto some sort of uh, design you were working on, adding all that different types of text um, all kinds of different things. I, I started buying a lot of that reverse um, text because I like doing reverse type of uh, text on my uh, pieces. And when the digital age started rolling in and uh, places started blowing this type of stuff out, um, I would go and uh, pick it up for, I don't know, what it was probably... 80% off, I'm guessing. I don't know. They couldn't They couldn't get rid of this stuff. Because all this stuff you can just do on a computer at some point in time. And, uh, you know, the writing was on the wall. And uh, they were just getting rid of it. So all these little types of flourishes and things like that. I use these types of things a lot on um, some t-shirt designs that I was working for, for the uh, Stamp of the Hand Company. There were some other types of, uh, there were some other companies that made it. So Letraset was the main one. And then I do have some um, chart pack here somewhere. And here's some chart pack lettering right here. Um, but anyways, all kinds of little symbols, dingbats and things like that. Uh, even technical little things. Um, and I'll just go through these really quickly here, but um, I noticed in here, you know, when we were talking about the 80s, there was a really specific stylized type of uh, letter form that was around at the time. There was, you know, your basics and things like that, like Helvetica and things like that, but when you look through here, there's a lot of um, uh, fonts that you would never see used in graphic design, unless it comes around again for some reason, but a lot of this stuff is like terribly dated and it would and if you used it in some sort of project it would look really dated and uh, I don't know definitely not like a timeless type of uh, um, letter form in here of any type okay so going through here different letter forms I would pour through this book all the time and you would kind of have to just visualize um, what this type might look like over your piece because you really didn't know until you got it so you would just have to kind of imagine it and especially if it was in a reverse um, and then okay so not only that but all of these different types of things these were the different um, sizes I believe that um, these pieces were available in I don't know if the 60 there represents 60 point uh, 42 and 30 that might be 30 point I'm not sure um, 
Oh, okay, so here are all the different um, font sizes right here. Maybe this is... Okay, so I see it right here. This shows you the full alphabet right here. And then here is uh, an indication of um, the different font sizes here, uh, there. So yeah, that is definitely the font size that comes after their code. So universe... God, can you imagine this? You know how you can just do this all on a computer now, but before, you know, I would imagine um, advertising houses had a gigantic bank of these types of things. Probably in the early 80s and 70s, they would have all this type of stuff. Um, I don't know what uh, makes the difference between this yellow page and this the front page. Maybe these ones were more... Yeah, I was going to say headlines or something like that, where the uh, other ones might be internal fonts. There were different types of typesetting machines, but it was really limited. Um, here's numbers right here, if you want just different number sheets. But one of the th fun things that were a lot of fun for me were um, what they call things like dingbats. Um, there were different types of... Um, oh, here is body sheets right here. So if you wanted an indication of what something might look like, is an indication of uh, the type if you're sending in some sort of layout to a, uh, a publisher or something like that, and they just wanted to have an idea of what the fonts would look like. It was just a bunch of little gibberish words like this just all laid out. It didn't say anything, but it would be an indication of what your um, artwork might look like with a specific um, font or font size and you would just kind of fill it in and you cut it out of these sheets. There were These ones weren't rub-ons but they were stickers so I don't know if I ever used that type of thing. Foreign language. Amazing. Um, lines and borders and symbols like I said and different types of dingbats. I have some of these things but can you imagine right here this one right here is just a bunch of lines. Okay I'm getting a big moray here on my camera over here but these were just lines like that, that you could either, I don't know if it was cut out stickers or if these ones were um, um, rub-ons, but if you wanted a really clean border like that, I mean, how do you do that? That's really crisp. You're going to have to do it with a technical pen, or you got one of these things and you utilize that. So I have some of these things, or these little dash marks like that. Circles. Um, I like the stars. Okay, now, I'm showing this on this um, video here because in some of my scenes, I'm kind of really running low on this one, but see these little, little bright little kind of reverse um, stars like this? These are rub-ons, so this would look really great on, you know, your different scenes. I mean, I wouldn't do it on this one right here, but you can take like a, a star like that and put it up there in the sky you know, in rub-on form, right? I mean, this is a perfect little thing like this. I've used all of my little ones in here because um, I really love these sheets and how you can apply them uh, onto our stamp scenes. Uh, and this one really, it looks like I have a couple of these ones right here. These ones are probably from, I don't know, can you imagine that, like, in a scene or something like that? You can just kind of rub it on up there. But these reversed out things, I mean, you can do text, too, in that typography. Um, you can rub it onto your cards. I, I, there are some places that sell these. I think I saw it in some craft stores, but they used to have all kinds of things, like, you know, just like your traditional stars and even little circles like that. If you wanted a circle or a circle bo or a type of linear border like that, you know, you wanted to just rub a bunch of them down you know, around some sort of headline or something like that. There's little corner types of elements like these. You don't have to use them in a square. You can use that on a full-size piece of paper. You just put this one up in each corner. So all kinds of different elements. And I'm, I mean, I'm definitely of the digital age and things like that. I was kind of borderline, you know, in college when everything started kind of switching over. But kind of my heart is still analog, and I love getting my hands on things and, you know, cutting and pasting and, yeah, they had these uh, other things and whatever, the old days called waxers, you would wax, you know, this thin layer of something onto something and you can position like, you know, some sort of cutout with this thin wax layer and you can put it on something, you know, for, um, 
what they, what they call camera work and taking photographs of your pieces um, for the printing, you know, printing purposes. There's even barcodes right here. But anyways, flipping around like this, going through this, I mean, these types of things really influenced me. And then the types of, uh, here's some trees and things like that. Um, I would just drool over this magazine, and I would look at it all the time. Um, in high school, I was taking a, a graphic arts class, so we did some camera work, so I would recognize a lot of the uh, things like films in here. They're, I don't know. So I just saw it somewhere in here, but um, I haven't looked at this book here in probably 20 years. Maybe, I don't know, maybe 30 years. Look at this. The praying man is here, is using those um, cut-out zipatone pieces with these different types of textures. I used to love that praying man is right there. I used to think that was so cool, but here's these zip-tone um, screen uh uh, values in different uh, um, dot weights and you would cut these out and you would apply them into that given area so you would just trace wh over whatever you had. And I think I have some of that zip down here somewhere as far as textures go. Yeah, see this textures right here? Those are a bunch of little dots. That's not gray. That's a bunch. That's black with a bunch of tiny little I can't take a close-up of that, but um, see this like transitioning gradations right here. So all of this type of stuff came into play as far as how I design my stamps as well. Um, yeah, see this gradation right here. Okay, oh my god, extreme moray here, but those are tiny little dots. And it transitions into uh, black here. So these are all the types of things that I try to utilize uh, in my own work and kind of learning how to do these different types of textures. Here's one that's kind of more random like that instead of a, kind of that straight on kind of computerized type of thing there. But all of those different types of textures like that I tried to learn and to do with a technical pen and to apply it to, you know, different rubber stamps, so um, different transitions and things like that in terms of line weight. See these transitions of uh, um, dot patterns going from kind of dark to light and whatnot. So I got all that from looking at these types of um, texture patterns. Going back to high school, here's one that's kind of more, there's a mesotint right here those are called but look at those different types of uh, textural patterns and here this is a really good indication of what's going on in the different designs that I do right here it's transitions right here to represent kind of shade and light within a given space but these whole things like that came in these big sheets so in back in the day I mean I don't do this on my stamps here but um, you know, if you wanted to do something with that type of pattern, you can just cut it out instead of spending, you know, a ton of time um, drawing that or stippling it in. It would take, a, you know, forever to do something like that. Transitions like here, looking like metal and whatnot. Okay, but I would look at these. Look at this. This is like rocky pebble patterns and, you know, and so on and so forth. Wood patterns, wood grain. Okay. So when you learn how to do that type of thing, it's called um, rendering. You figure out how to um, draw something um, in the spirit of the surface and textural quality of that actual item. So um, you're always trying to give, you know, if you draw something that's wood, you want it to have a different pattern than, um, say, something like stone and within rock. You know, there's different types of looks between like granite and sandstone and so on and so forth. So the challenges and trying to achieve that type of look in designs like that. Okay, so here's some little different types of uh, patterns showing in my rock right here. Okay, but that'll look different than, you know, uh, the textures that I do in something like a, a sand bound or, you know, definitely something like snow would be a lot different. You know, these rocky peaks up here have specific little areas and, 
you try to change the kind of the patterns a little bit between the different elevations because in geology you know there's different types of uh uh patterns that take place in the back you know up higher than lower you know so on and so forth um let's flip through here really fast okay so masking films drafting tapes my gosh there were all kinds of different colors like this that you can get i never got the tapes or something like that borders right here a lot of different borders um okay so color materials i was kind of more of a black and white illustrator but um i used to love seeing the graphic design okay now these pens right here were some of the first kind of art markers that i got and I still have them. I think this was my first one right here. But these are the Letra Set um, markers. Um, and these ones right here, they're single-sided. You had to get them in either fine point or thick. I use, I'd get most of mine in fine. But these types of things, well, this one's a thick one right here, but um, I used to get those, this little airbrushing type of thing you see them for copic markers you know now where you have that um, compressor or can of air and it shoots a spray onto that and you can get kind of that airbrush type of effect but anyways this is the first system that i saw where you can do that and um, i was just testing this out just out of curious curiosity i figured it was be you know long since dried out but there's still some ink in these things and we're talking you know mid 80s oh my gosh that one's super juicy still i don't know if these are still around i now yeah, they might have been I, I know they were around like 20 years ago i haven't looked at since okay so here's that this was the letra jet air marker okay and i went through so many cans of compressed air i always wanted to get a compressor but i just didn't have the money for it you know in high school and you know, these were probably the only pens. I don't know if I had more pens. I might have had a couple more, but, you know, these were fairly expensive even back in the day, for you know, especially for a high school or college student, so I didn't pick up a lot of that type of thing. But, oh, going on, I mean, this was a really influential book, and I really loved it. I loved all the different samples in the background, or it, it, throughout the, mag uh, the the catalog here. And I would look at it all the time and kind of have my wish list here. Um, different types of fonts. Art boards, as far as my art boards that I draw on. Um, still a lot of the uh, Letra, Letra Max boards. I bought a big case of it at one point in time. But um, there were the hot press boards, the cold press boards. Hot press were a lot smoother. The cold press were better for things like watercolors and whatnot. Illustration boards were um, kind of Bristol boards, really um, high-quality uh, papers um, adhered to um, some sort of archival, you know, stiffer kind of cardboard type of thing. And I get those all the time. Looks like they came in different... Oh, they had matte boards as well. Those weren't the illustration boards, but for matting. Studio accessories. I'd see, you know, little things like that with these cases and all that organization. And look at that pen holder, which everyone has now for, like, this, like, Copics. But these Letra Set storage units right here were the things that, like, this drawer system where you can hold your, um, those, um, uh, font sheets and, you know, textural sheets and whatnot. Uh, look at those, all those pens. That would have, I would have been drooling for something like that back in the day, but that was probably more for, like, a, you know, professional graphic designer, whatever, you know, kind of advanced student, maybe, I don't know. That would, uh, be really expensive back then, as just as some pens are really expensive these days, but, um, I don't know if you use them all the time. And, I mean, this one right here, I mean, uh... This is like 30 years old. I never use these things, but, you know, just in terms of the quality of them. I'm just shocked that that's not completely dried out. This is showing you how you apply those um, rub-ons right here. But there were different types of systems where you can really get down straight, I guess. Looks like this one right here. You can apply, oh, you rub it onto uh, a certain type of material and get it all in place. 
and then you take that strip and then you apply that on something as the final process. It's all kinds of fun things for industrial designers. You using these types of um, fonts to you know press onto your um, uh, comps. They call them comprehensives. You know so you can you know give the client a really good idea of what something's going to look like before the final production of it. You can show them their um, kind of your little models of something. So all kinds of fun things. Here's a, you know, I just did a video on um, um, spray sealants right here. So here's a matte protective coating right here by Letraset. These days I use Krylon and whatnot. Uh, dry transfers. Dry transfers, like I said, were such a big portion of this book and what these um, different companies sold this in a chart pack and showing you how you apply it. I do have the Letra set kind of rub on um, little tool somewhere around here. Uh, right here, this is your rub on tool. Um, it's just a little metal piece that has a smooth kind of <laughs> thing. I don't think I used that. I think I used like a pencil when I was in high school, you know, just because I'd save money and. Uh, uh, buy more, I'd rather buy more, um, you know, uh, dry transfer sheets than, uh, than those tools there, but, um, I later on got that tool, and whatnot. Um, going on, I don't know, that is it. I have another one of these that came out right after that, um, probably the following year, or maybe two years later, and it's completely missing the the cover, so I was probably utilizing that one a lot in college. I wasn't in graphic design, but I was in illustration, but I was doing some things kind of outside of school. Illustration, you'd never use um, these types of uh, things like that. They wanted everything to be kind of hand done and whatnot, but I still, you know, in illustration, I still had my um, kind of, uh, I don't know, not my heart, but part of it. It was in graphic design. I love graphic design, but I, you know, there was just no way to double major or something like that. So, anyways, but all these things were really cool, and I still enjoy looking at really good design and uh, different types of fonts and whatnot, of which we all have kind of access to thousands and thousands and thousands. And you know, when you kind of multiply that with the different font sizes and the different weights of it, bold, you know, um, bold outline, what is it? You can add shadows to all these different types of things just at, you know, right at your fingertips. It's really kind of amazing, but um, I don't know, there's still something to the analog process and that's what kind of rubber stamping is still about unless you're doing kind of digital um, scrapbooking layouts and whatnot, then you're really familiar with them all of those types of tools, but I still like doing things by hand, and I don't know, I'll utilize some of these going forward and uh, maybe put in some different types of text in here. I mean, I have all those different types of fonts there still. Uh, some of them might look a little bit dated, but it might be fun to kind of put in some kind of letter forms right on to the physical piece as opposed to doing it digitally after, you know, kind of scanning these types of things in. And we'll see about that. I'll look for some good applications to apply some of the Letra uh, Set um, uh, products into my pieces going forward. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for always tuning into the Samscapes channel.